Okay, here we are, everyone. Um, welcome to the Clicked Salesforce Admin and Analyst Team Sprint. Today is user story feedback. I will be your host. I'm Mallory Donahue, and our coach here today, uh, the main person who will be giving feedback on your user stories, is Gaurav Ketherpal. Um, I'm Mallory. I'm an associate consultant at Slalom Consulting on their digital engagement team. And Gaurav, do you want to give a little introduction, a little background about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Gaurav Khetrapal. I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for about 15 years. And I've been a coach for uh, several of these team sprints and a few challenges uh, uh, that Clicked has ran. And you can literally see I, I wear Clicked on my sleeve. Um, been working with a few teams in the past and uh, it's been it's been so gratifying to see people like elevate themselves in the Salesforce ecosystem and and get on to get admin and business analyst jobs and I am looking forward to what what all uh, you've produced as user story artifacts uh, in this session. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gaurav. All right. Let's see if I... Sorry, Jeff always inserts music into these <laughs> and I don't always start it on time. So welcome back, everyone. You have had your kickoff. You've had your uh, stakeholder interviews with Jennifer Gray um, and you have had a persona feedback session. So today will be a little bit like those. One person from each team should raise their hand, which people have already done. Please raise your hand as soon as possible so that I can estimate the time needed for everyone's feedback session. And we'd like you to present um, one user story, or maybe two, uh, and perhaps if you present two, then Gaurav can pick one to give feedback on, uh, that then um, we will give feedback on. Everyone has a chance um, to do this from their team, and we'll limit each team's time to around three minutes. So with that in mind, thank you all for raising your hand. Let's see what's next in this deck. All right, and we will get on to feedback with Gaurav. When I bring you on stage, you'll see a button at the bottom of your screen on AirMeet, and it's a square with a little arrow pointing upwards. That is how you can share your screen to present your user story. And after you present it, leave it up. Don't take it away so that we can give feedback on it. So first of all, I'm giving the, the mic to Nam. Hi there. Hi. How are you, Mallory? I'm doing well. What team are you from? I'm uh, from Team 9, Vanilla Consulting. Ooh, lovely. All right. All right, so let me share. So we're here today to present the user stories we worked on for the general manager, warehouse manager, while we while the screening comes up. We worked on two user stories. Let me see. Okay. Okay. Still not coming up. I'm not seeing it. Is it saying there's a permissions issue? Okay. Let me give it one more try. And if not, uh, if it is like a permissions issue, you can go off and restart and I will c come back to you. Oh, okay, there here, goes. Here, there here we go. Just in time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So let's start with the first user story we drafted. As a general, man as a general warehouse manager, I want a system to receive standardized requests for relief supplies with all necessary information so that I can work on more efficient distribution. And we did some acceptance criteria for that story. And the information required on the request would be distribution center manager name, email, and phone number, a second point of contact, with the name, email, and phone number, list of required relief supplies, the category, the name, 
and how many supply measurement units required. And one of the most important things, urgency status. If it's urgent, somewhat urgent, or regular urgent. The second story we, we built was, as a general warehouse manager, I want a system to automatic, automatically assign requests based on urgency so that the workload can be distributed accordingly between team members. And as an acceptance criteria, if it's urgent, it would be assigned to the general warehouse manager. And if it's not urgent or, so, or regular, it would be assigned to a team member. We did a third one with another point, but I don't know how we're doing on time. Yeah, let's stop here. Um, this is looking great. Um, Grav, you want to go ahead and give some feedback? Uh, pick, maybe pick one of these to give some feedback on. Yeah, I'll pick the first one because I think that's the more uh, most uh, detailed. So I think <clears throat> like there are three fundamental parts to a user story, the, the who, um, the what, and I think uh, the why. So I think... Uh, I can see like the persona is defined, like you have like the general warehouse manager, uh, he wants to receive like a request with all the necessary information. And then you have detailed out what that necessary information is. Um, what I would ideally want you to elaborate is when you say work on more efficient distribution, this is very, very subjective. So you need to define a criteria. For example, you could define like all such supplies for Urgent orders should be dispatched within 24 hours. For non -urgent, somewhat urgent, it should be 48 hours. Uh, for regular orders, it can be like three days to seven days, something like that. But um, more efficient distribution, that's a very, very vague term. So as part of acceptance okay. criteria, unless you define it very, very clearly, um, you will run into issues in terms of uh, in terms of accepting a user story but other than that like it's it's very very detailed and i think you have also captured most of the fields that i would expect so uh, the name email contact details are there as well as um, yeah the information related to supplies is there so yeah other than other than the metric to qualify what efficient distribution is everything else looks good to me well, thank you. Uh, very good. So we'll work on that, obviously, on the subjective part of making it a more objective uh, part. Thank you, Team yeah. Nine. These look great. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much for the feedback. Yeah. I think Jennifer would be very happy. Yes, great. Love it when everyone is giving applause um, with the emojis. Awesome way to support each other. All right, we've got Kiritika. When you're ready, tell us which team you're with. Uh, can you see my screen? Can't see your screen yet. Sometimes it takes a moment, though. Is it looking to you like you're sharing your screen? Um. Uh -huh. Oh, here we are. All right. You want to read a couple of those to us? Uh, which team are you with? I'm from Team 12. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you for this opportunity. So here we go. So as the general warehouse manager for the Red Cross, I want to access real-time measures of inventory so that I can place accurate orders to minimize excess and shortage and to answer requests with accurate information so that I can generate reports upon availability. So the acceptance criteria, if the supplies are used, then the inventory is automatically updated to reflect real-time numbers. As a general warehouse manager for the American Red Cross, I want to have a transparent communication channel to communicate with the case manager who work in other distribution centers so that a lag time between the request and the fulfillment can be minimized. The acceptance okay. criteria, if requests are submitted, then they are placed into queue with a clear timeline for processing. 
All right, thank you so much. Go ahead, Garak. Yeah, I think uh, again similar feedback. I think for number two, like if you saw the earlier uh, team present, like they clearly mentioned. Uh, and so, for example, you cannot just mention a clear timeline for processing for your second user story. Uh, you can make an assumption and you can put that assumption like uh, the request must be submitted and placed in a queue within, for example, five minutes or 10 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever that timeline is. Okay. Similarly, for the third one, like when you say necessary information, if you look at how the earlier team like actually laid out like what that necessary information is, uh -huh. uh, for example, the supply name, the supply quantity and all of that. So that that all needs to come as part of the acceptance criteria. Uh, okay. Unless it's defined very, very clearly, so it's, it's a very difficult for, for, for the client to actually accept that user story. So I think your conditions are right, but the acceptance criteria definitely needs revision for, for most of them. Okay, we'll work on it, sir. Excellent feedback. Thank all you. right, well, thank you, Team 12. All right. Next, we have Yvonne. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Yep. Okay, let me share my screen. And Yvonne, which team are you from? Uh, 11. Thank you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Not quite yet, but it seems like... It's taking a couple moments today <laughs> um, with everyone. So let's give it just a second. There it goes. Yep, here we are. All right. If you can zoom in on like one at a time for us, that would be great. Okay, let's see. I'll do this one up here in the corner. Is, can you see that or you want me to zoom a little more? I think it's fine. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, um, as a general warehouse manager, I want to be notified about low stock levels so I can do auto shipments. And our acceptance criteria will agree it's been completed when I'm notified when stock falls below our required minimum. Auto shipments are triggered once stock levels fall below required minimum. And then I'll do the one right next to it. Um, as a general warehouse manager, I want to be notified about advanced notices of impeding crisis so I can prioritize accordingly. And um, our acceptance criteria will agree it's completed when I can see the inventory level for each item at all our warehouses on a state and regional level. I can see fluctuation in inventory levels by item. I can see recent inbound and outbound shipments and inventory levels are updated in real time. Okay, okay I think, thank you uh, so much, Ivan. First, first remark is both of them are really well thought through, so so well done on that. Uh, the first one I think is, is, is well done, like you assume there is a minimum, uh, required minimum. I would, as I said earlier, like I would actually go one step further and, and let's assume you you put in an assumption for that this is the required minimum i think the one thing which i i see missing in both user stories is uh, how are you notifying so for example it could be via when it comes to salesforce there are a number of ways of doing it it could be via chatter it could be via email it could be even via text message text messaging using something like digital engagement so I think it's best to kind of clarify that in the acceptance criteria as well. And then for the second one, I think uh, you you kind of define all the things related to um, inventory, but you actually do not define what an impeding crisis is. So I think uh, that is something which is missing and which should be clarified as part of your user story. Because otherwise, like if there is no clear definition of what an impeding crisis is, uh, you cannot send an advance notice because you don't know what is triggering and heating prices. That makes sense. Thank you so much for your feedback. We'll work on that. Thank you, Yvonne and Team 11. All right, we're bringing up Erwin. Good morning. I'm uh, Erwin from Team 14. Thank you. 
And I think you can see my screen now. Yes. Yes. All right. So I'm going to skip over the first one uh, since I think the first team covered it. So I'm going to go on to the next ones. Um, so our user stories that our team worked on, uh, the first one is, as a general warehouse manager, I want to be notified immediately of emergency situations so that I can respond within four hours. Our acceptance criteria is email notifications sent subsequently after an urgent priority request is submitted. General warehouse manager is notified via email with subject line starting with urgent. Uh, the next one is, as the general warehouse manager, I want to delegate responsibility to the right people so there is no disruption in the approval process while I am on a vacation or away. The acceptance criteria is the general warehouse a manager can delegate another manager to respond to urgent requests. The general warehouse manager can delegate another team member to respond to low priority requests. And the general warehouse manager does not receive requests while she is away. Yeah, really well done. So I think uh, this is uh, this is exactly what I mentioned to the previous team that you are clearly send, uh, specifying that the medium of notification is an email which is perfect you're also specifying that the email actually goes out with a subject line stating that it's an emergency situation so that is fantastic um so that i can respond within four hours i think this is this is all good um for the third one uh process while i'm on location away i think this is also good um, you could also add like uh, Another acceptance criteria that once the person returns, what what is supposed to happen in that case? So, I think uh, because like this is this is one piece of it. Like when when they are away, like they don't um, they don't really want to receive any requests. But once they come back, what actually happens? Like, are is the are requests still being delegated? What what's happening in that case? If you could add that, I think that would make it uh, even stronger. But th these are really well done. So so good job. Great, thank you. Great job, Erwin and Team 14. And then I just want to say, you know, if you have a story that is similar to something another team did, it's not always uh, a bad thing to read it out. Sometimes there are subtle differences, things that can, you know, uh, make it maybe not better or worse, but just different. So uh, no worries there. Don't worry if you repeat a, something. Actually, that's a good sign, right? It means we're all kind of on the same page with what's needed from the client. So, okay, we've got Serge coming up. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, to, yeah. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see it now? Yes. Hello, hello, my name is Serge, calling from the UK. And uh, this is our story we've written. I'm part of team two like I said, um, and it says, as a general, uh, general world manager for the American Red Cross, I want to automate the tracking and distribution of emergency relief material so that I can successfully supply requests from local distribution centers managers. And as a acceptance criteria, if the tracking and distribution of emergency relief material is automated, then I will it will help reduce the time it takes to supply requests from distribution centers managers. And the second one is, as a general warehouse manager, I want to see at, at glance the inventory uh, details of every distribution center and the urgency level so that I can manage the entire distribution process better and faster. And for acceptance criteria for the second one is, if the inventory details are well, uh, if the identity details are at glance, then this will help manage the distribution relief better. And if I may have time, I can do this, the third one, which is as a general warehouse manager, I want other colleagues to share the handling of less critical or urgent supply requests so that I can manage the distribution process better and faster. And acceptance criteria is if colleague can share in the handle of relief requests, then managing re relief requests will be better and faster. 
thank you yeah All i right. think uh, first thing first thing which stood out for me was how you have organized it persona okay. user story acceptance criteria that is brilliant uh, this okay. is how we do it in in our projects as well and i actually okay. love it that you put in a name and you put in the image as well just to represent this particular persona and again breaking it down into three column format like this is this is very very common in 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 enterprise grade project so well done on that and Thank also you. i think you color coded like as persona i want this so that this happens and then your acceptance criteria is also color coded that is all great the yeah. problem is uh, yeah. your acceptance criteria are not well defined so if you see some oh. of the other uh, teams how they did it like you need to quantify when you say this will reduce time you need to quantify make an assumption but you you need to quantify it similarly okay. when you say manage the distribution of relief better by 30% 40% okay. reduce time to delivery uh, and again better and faster so these are very very subjective terms so if you can if you can quantify these i think this will this will make it even even better but wow. i love the i love the formatting in terms of how you have laid it out and and the color coding okay. as well oh thank you thank you so much thank you for your feedback thank you and sirish which team were you from i'm sorry if i missed that team team 2 team 2 thank you so yes. much sirish and team 2 great job yeah. everyone all right we've got deepa coming up to the stage Okay, Deepa, let us know. <laughs> Just a minute. Thank you. Uh, let me. Yeah, you can see it whenever you're ready. That's great. Yeah. So uh, I'm from uh, Team Five. So um, we have addressed two pain points. So uh, the first one, the email requests are not marked correctly and not do, they contain all the needed information. So as a general warehouse manager at the Red Cross, I, have, uh, I want to have all pertinent information clearly visible in my email request so that I can respond to requests in 36 hours for normal and four hours for urgent request. And our acceptance criteria is if every time the general warehouse manager receives an email request or alert, she can see the center manager info, supply manager info, who the correct uh, contact person is, what the need is in detail, the level of urgency, and if the needs are perishable or uh, non-perishable, and how many items are needed, and where the supply need, uh, needs to be shipped to, and also, uh, can respond in within the 36 or uh, 4 hour time frame. And the next uh, pain point we addressed is uh, she is um, overwhelmed with all the email requests. She receives that she is the only one that can respond to them. And he, uh, she should have the ability for other team members to take requests. So the user story is as a general warehouse manager at the American Red Cross, uh, I want to reroute the emails to the other teammates so that the other team members can work on the request and respond to the emails within the time frame. So acceptance criteria is if she is not able to or not available to respond to the emails, the other teammates can take the request and response, uh, respond to the emails. Thank you. Yeah, pretty good. I think uh first one is 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 fairly detailed and the second one is uh if she's the only one have the ability for other team members to take requests so i think nowhere does it say that if she is not available only in that case the other team members have to take requests it could also be a case where the requests are being split between multiple people so you might want to read the um Read the text again just to be sure that your user story is uh, aligned to that. And the first okay. one, I think it's it's mostly there. Um, just one question. When you say in cell C, I want all pertinent information, what is that pertinent information referring to? Like all the informations like the uh, supply manager info, the correct contact person, all those details. Okay. So Got that it. she can Got respond. It. 
yeah i think uh, yeah i think it's it's all clear yeah i think you have mentioned it's an email so i think the mode of communication is also clear yeah i think the first one looks good for the second one as i said just just read through the uh, text again just to make sure that you have interpreted it right thank you all right thank you deepa and oh did i ask which team you're from I... i'm trying to keep track here but okay um we I have one person left, and I know that there are more teams. So if anyone needs to raise their hand, uh, please get in line. We've got Indira coming up to the stage now. Indira, welcome. Hello. Um, where can I share? I don't see. So at the bottom bar of the screen, um, there's a little square with an arrow pointing up. Do you see yeah. it says present to audience? I need to remember that it says present to audience and not share. That's a. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I'm Indira. I'm from Team Three. Uh, so the first one, I think it has been already covered, but I'll just read through. As a general warehouse manager of AR for ARC, I would like to create a request form with all the details that I need and also which lets me decide the level of priority. If it is high, like six hours, I'll take care of it. Uh, if it is either medium or low within 36 hours, my team members will handle it. Uh, this will avoid multiple emails coming to me with incomplete information. That's my first user story. And as and the second one, as a general warehouse manager for ARC, I would like myself and my team members to have the access to view the inventories at other warehouses and distribution centers so that I can order the supplies according to the request form based on the level of urgency. And the third one, as a general warehouse manager for ARC, I would like to create a response form so that the managers at the distribution centers are notified that the request has been received and is being worked upon. So that's the auto response rules. Uh, and the fourth one, as a general warehouse manager for ARC, I would like to receive a form from my team after they have worked on the request so that I'll be the one to finally approve the request made by the distribution centers. So this will be the approval request uh, approvals. So that, that's it. OK. OK, thank you. Yeah, thank you. For Number three, as well as number four, I think the notification mechanism, which I highlighted earlier, I think uh, that seems to be missing. So you should definitely add add a explicit um, mention that it will be done via email or another mechanism like chatter, uh, whatever, whatever you want to do in that case. Um, for the second one, uh, I can order the supplies accordingly. So I think you need to quantify your uh, acceptance criteria a little bit. Like this is this is way too generic for for a user story, and the client when they they'll not feel comfortable signing uh, signing off on a user story where the acceptance criteria is is not defined very crisply. So it should be very very clearly defined. Like I want to have access to view access to the inventory at other warehouses and distribution centers. And then you can uh, you need to basically quantify in terms of what that means for the customer. I think you have done, for example, some of it in user story one, where you define like high is within six hours, medium and low is within 36 hours. And when also you say handle it, you rather than using such generic terms, you basically need to define what action will be will, will they be taking on it. So um, yeah, other than that, looks looks good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you, Indira. All right. So we don't have any other hands raised. I've never gotten through things so quickly before um, in, in, when, when hosting a lot of these. But I thought that uh, we you gave a lot of similar feedback to several of the user stories. <clears throat> things about very specific and crisp acceptance criteria, et cetera. And I think something that can be difficult to understand when you're first coming into consulting or BA work is how the user stories, after they're written, how they're used 
in the project. So can you talk to us a little bit, just kind of, you know, like explaining it, you know, to someone who's never done this before, after you create that user story, where does it go? What happens with it next? Yeah. So in, in fact, before that, there is a question in the chat by Yvonne, oh, so I'll take that. So she's asking, what is an epic? So um, when you when you start a project, like epic is something which user stories are very, very granular. So user story is something which you can assign to a developer. They will create tasks about out of it and they will uh, they will they will work on those tasks. Similarly, for a QA, a user story is a very, very tangible uh, input to them, like they can test that user story and then they can log defects against that user story. Epic is generally something which is which is a little bit more high level. So for example, Epic is you would combine potentially five to 10 user stories in an Epic, but that Epic itself cannot be cannot be tested or cannot be developed on its own. So for example, if I were if I'm building a new enterprise application and I say authentication and authorization, that is an epic. Within authentication and authorization, I will have a sign-in page. I will have a sign-up page. Uh, I may have a profile page. I may have a permissions. Uh, so all those would be user stories, but that authorization and authentication will be my epic in that case. Um, there's another question which came in from Harshada. Do you suggest to manage user stories in Jira? Jira is a fantastic tool. Uh, to, to manage projects as well as like user stories included, but there are a lot of other tools as well. So I would not I would not want you to limit to Jira. Like there are there are a number of tools and there are a lot of open source tools as well which you can use. But Jira is very very common. Uh, it's a it's a costly product, but if if your company has it or if if you already have access to it, absolutely, it's a very powerful tool in that in that sense. And uh, going to your question, uh, Mallory. So I think. As I said, user stories are like, we, we call them the source of truth as far as uh, developers and QA are concerned. So uh, in my projects, like I always make sure that whenever a developer is logging time, uh, and, and time is time is essentially money in consulting, that it is actually tied back to a user story. So anything that they are doing for a project is, uh, I can trace it back uh, to, a, to a user story and then that user story I can actually trace it back to the functional functional requirement specification. So in that sense like there is an end-to-end -end, uh, traceability from the client requirement to the user story to a, to the line of code that the developer has written and also to the test case as well what which the QA writes. So in that sense like uh, user story is something that developer builds on. User story is also something that the QA, the QA person would actually use and build their test cases off. So in that sense, it's a, it's a unit of work that, which is used both by development and QA teams. All right. And we, you know, the client approves those user stories and the acceptance criteria, and then we can, you know, go forward with our work. So, all right. Does anyone, oh, hmm, the timing, uh, someone mentioned that the timing was an hour later, and that's the reason why few of them have missed. Okay. Well, that's uh, good to keep in mind. I'll let Jeff know about that. Does anyone have any other questions about user stories? Drop them in the chat. One other thing I'd like to mention is you will go through a refinement process probably with your team members. I know uh, on our team, I come up with a few user stories that are more related to my work and um, different team members focusing on different things may come up with other user stories. Sometimes we'll come together to refine them or groom them together. Uh, and maybe then there's even another internal, you know, refinement or grooming session. So it's not that, you know, if you come into a job and you make your first user story, expect feedback. And if you've got a good team and a good boss, they probably don't expect them to be absolutely perfect the first time. You know, it, they're always a bit of a work in progress. Um, and you'll hear about varying numbers of user stories per project or per epic. Um, I'm on a team right now where we have relatively, I think, a small volume of user stories to kind of stand up a chat bot. You know, we'll have 20-ish or something like that. But on a project, you could have hundreds, you know, um, the, they're um, assigned to different people. Uh, and of course, our user stories are within the context of a much larger project. So that number can vary. That's a 
the volume. That's a question I've seen before on these sessions. Is that anything you'd like to speak to, Gaurav? Yeah, definitely. I think, again, there are a couple of questions, so probably I'll, I'll take them first. So um, Yvonne asked, uh, is there such a thing that many accept, too many acceptance criteria per user story? So uh, this is a very valid question, and uh, I've seen this uh, a lot. And if you are actually having too many acceptance criteria in your user story for a specific user story, that is a good indication that you need to break down that story into smaller stories. So uh, if like, for example, you are trying to um, mix up too many things and that is leading to a expanded acceptance criteria, then that's probably not, not one user story. You, you need to break it down. You need to rethink your user story and then uh, break it down into smaller user stories and then have those uh, acceptance criteria also broken down into different chunks. Uh, Siddharth has an interesting question. Is there a possibility that user story gets more granular or groomed post the approval from the client? Uh, if yes, then how do we deal with respect to the estimate? So it really depends. Like, again, there are multiple ways in terms of you actually, how you, how you scope out or how you estimate your user stories, like a, a very common, uh, uh, mechanism is like t-shirt size uh, there is there is also a poker way to to do it and there are a number of ways like you you can you can you can use uh, whatever whatever works best for your organization as far as um, the estimate is concerned like for example as i said if uh, your overall estimate should not really change like again if you are breaking down stories you are refining them and breaking them down into smaller user stories in all likelihood, overall estimate should not change. Maybe the estimate per user story is changing a little bit. But if the scope itself is changing uh, because of the way that the user stories are being refined, then that is probably an indication that you missed something from the requirements in the user story. And if that is if that is a scope creep or if that is something which has been missed, then I think the estimates will, will eventually change. And it's really up to the project team to how, how do you justify that or how do you overcome any objections um, from the client in that case. But as long as it's a question of how granular your user stories are, maybe you will move certain pieces from one user story to the other, but that should not really lead to a change in the overall estimates. And sorry, Mallory, that Mallory, that was a long answer and I completely forgot. No, that's your... great. I was missing those. I was looking in the chat, not the Q&A. So I'm so glad you were looking there. Thank you. Um, I can't even remember what my question was. I loved uh, uh, talking about the volume. A lot of times people ask, how many user stories should we have? Um, and it depends, of course, but I didn't know if you wanted to speak to that or speak to any projects where you had a surprisingly large amount or a surprisingly small amount of user stories. Yeah, so I would say there is no one size fits all approach uh, as far as, or there is no percentage or formula, magic formula to arrive at the number of user stories. I think it really goes down to the functional uh, requirement specification that you build off. And uh, based on that, you build out, I, I can talk through the process. So for example, what we usually do is the functional requirement specification. We first actually build out the epics. And epics are a logical grouping in our case, like for example, per module or per persona. And then we actually refine, based on that epic, we actually create the user stories. And then we actually review the user story to just check if that user story is uh, self-sustainable. For example, if it can be broken down further into uh, smaller user stories, if not, then, then that's, a, that's a good measure of what a user story could look like. But there is there is absolutely no um, no magic formula as i said to determine what is a good number of user stories in fact i would be curious to know because you work in a ba role so is that something that that you have come across in your experience is well you know <clears throat> i'm a little i'm a little bit of like a hybrid like you know ba but like i said our stories it's like we seem to come in with a very small amount of stories but that's cuz we sort of come in with these chatbots right now, you know, is sort of what we do. But it can it can depend to you, though, on like, how technical the chatbot is getting that can get, you know, bigger and bigger. So it like, like I said, absolutely, it just depends. Don't be surprised, though, if you go and um, have a small amount one time and a large amount another time or, or encounters like that. Don't worry. Don't worry, you haven't done anything wrong. So okay. 
Um, any other questions? I'm, now I'm looking at the Q&A part. All right. Oh, I'm so glad that Anna reminded me of my question. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, I am going to give you some time back. Uh, that's another little phrase that people will say to you all the time in consulting. Okay, business process map section. If we need more digital information, do we ask on Slack or can we just make it up ourselves? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, the next uh, the next session that you will have is business process mapping. So we did our quick recap in Q&A. And the next Step is business process maps. Yes, you should use all of the available information that's in the LMS and from your uh, interviews, etc. The coaches won't be available to give you like specific information about the business process. Absolutely um, make some assumptions. And for the purpose of this challenge, you know, whatever assumption you make, as long as it's mapped well, then that will be a great, you know, way to have this learning experience work for you. So it's not that we'll say, oh, no, Jennifer didn't say that she, you know, makes a phone call, she doesn't email, whatever. That's not going to be a huge deal. It's more about the sort of the quality of the map. Um, so use your tools from the LMS for that. And we will see you in business process maps. Let me see if I can uh, tell you when I have that on my schedule. I have business process maps on Monday, an hour later than we started this session. This is, we started this session at 12 p.m. Eastern time. The next session is 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'm actually in central time, so I'm doing math just, <laughs> just a little. Uh, but I, uh, I'll let Jeff know that there was a little confusion around the time, so we get that cleared up. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Excellent job on the user stories. Uh, I learned a lot from Horov's feedback, and I hope you all did as well. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.